One of the things people talk about all the time, and I want to raise this in a different context in a way, but uh, is, is saying, well, look, there are frontline officers, you know, who are so highly trained and, and so on, uh, doing things that are, you know, reasonably mundane in the context of compared to sort of catching, you know, real criminals, but they're doing things like speed traps and so on. Um, have you looked at, uh, and, and I suppose it might be something you'd have to negotiate with the uh, police association, um, you know, having other kinds of people, or are there legal reasons why you couldn't have a non-police officer, somebody more like a parking control officer, manning a um, a radar uh, a radar installation? Well, quite frankly, we've we've had we've looked very hard at at the whole business of static traffic enforcement for a couple of reasons. First of all. Traffic enforcement is is done to modify people's behavior to make our roadways safe, but we're also very concerned about the efficient flow of traffic around the city. Mm -hmm. I know, John, you're aware the Board of Trade came up with a report that said that there's an enormous cost in productivity, lost Mm -hmm. productivity of the city as a result of the gridlock that that is occurring on our roadways. Mm -hmm. And so we're looking at what's the best way to enforce those laws. Most importantly, what's the best way to get people to comply with the law so that they don't tie up traffic and they, they operate their vehicles within the speed limits. One of the things that we're looking at, you know, you've talked about using lesser skilled employees, but much of that work can be done with technology. And like that, a red light camera, for example. Well, red light cameras, but it's not limited to that. That that same technology can be used to deal with prohibited turns, which is a huge uh, cause of much of the gridlock that we face. We've got over 4,000 signalized intersections in the city of Toronto. And during rush hour, when people make prohibited left or right turns at those intersections, they tie up a whole lane of traffic. And when a cop pulls them over to give them a ticket, we take out another lane of traffic for several minutes, which which exasperates the problem of gridlock. It doesn't relieve it. And so one of the things that we can do is, is use technology technology to con- control and enforce the laws with respect to those turns, put up big signs and let people know, if you make this turn, you're definitely getting the ticket. And I think most people so informed would make a better decision, wouldn't make the turn, keep the traffic moving more efficiently, and get everybody home a little bit earlier. It's the same thing, quite frankly, with, with speed enforcement. And I know there are a number of political issues around, uh, about, around photo radar, but in fact, there is no more efficient way to enforce the speed laws in the province of Ontario and in the city of Toronto than through the use of photo radar. And I think it's time to have that discussion because it's so expensive to use police resources. And, and I hear this all the time from people. You know, why are we tying up expensive, well-trained police resources doing this type of strat- static traffic enforcement where you got to tie up the, t- the officer to do the ticketing and then pay him to go to court if you use technology to do it? then you, you save in the, the enormous amount of that cost. It's a far more efficient, far more effective way of getting it done. It's more economical, and it frees up police resources to deliver the important services of keeping our community safe and solving crimes. Uh, do, do you get much pushback on the on the red light camera photos? I know I got a ticket one time, and it came with this colored photo of my car and my license, and there wasn't much argument about it. Uh, and, you know, so you sort of say, well, you, you pay. Uh, do you get much pushback? I mean, when I say you, the system, on those tickets you when they get sent? It's kind of interesting, John. When people see those, you get those tickets. You know, they can see. There's the evidence right in front of them. There's a picture of them committing the offense. And I think most people understand that they made the mistake and and the consequences are Mm -hmm. theirs for them to pay. I think as well, I think it's important to put up signs. and Not so much for the red light. Everybody knows you're not supposed to run a red light. That's pretty straightforward. But on the prohibited turns, let people know that if you make the turn here, you're definitely getting the ticket. And I think the the overwhelming majority of intelligent people who are so informed will simply make the right decision, not tie up the intersection, not make the turn get and, and keep the traffic moving more safely. It's the same with photo radar, and, and it's not really about sneaking up on people. Let people know that the cameras are there. Encourage them to... Yeah, if the red light cameras, there's a sign that says it's right there, so you're warned. Absolutely, mm-hmm. and, and uh, the whole point of, of doing traffic enforcement, you know, people always think it's about revenue. For the police, there are, there are no revenue considerations. None of that money comes to the police. For us, it's about safety. It's about keeping our roadways safe and getting people to, to obey the law to keep them safe. And it's also about the efficient movement of traffic. You know, this, this business of gridlock in our city is becoming a significant oh, yeah. cost to every citizen yep. in, in Toronto. And, and so if we want to improve the quality of life, we want to give people more time with their families and, and, and not sitting in traffic, I think we've all got to make an effort to try to keep our roadways moving more safely and more efficiently, and technology can help us with that. And so I think it's a discussion that time has come to have. Um, I think there are, there are uh, good arguments to be made. I, I don't want to waste valuable police resources. These, these resources, we're going to have fewer of them with, with the new budget constraints in, imposed upon us. We want to make sure that we're using the officers that we have to the best possible effect. I need them in the neighborhoods. I need them in the cars. I need them to respond to people's calls for service and emergencies. I need them conducting criminal investigations. And if we can free them up from other duties that can be done more efficiently uh, with, through the use of technology, I think that's a discussion uh, as time has come. 
Amen. Thank you very much. And we'll look forward to the uh, budget to SAGA as it unfolds. Chief Phil Blair from the Toronto Police Service, thanks for your time. Thank you.